uh, Madam Chair, I am uh, informed that the computers are showing uh, a an image in the computer screen, but there must the the wiring. I'm not saying that it's the same as equipment, but the computer is showing a uh, image. But I think that the the, the uh, we'll try again. But anyway, Ma Madam Chair, we are in slide uh, 13 in the handout. This is slide 13. Thank you. Maybe That's it's a here. question of compatibility because we normally don't have this problem in the Senate. On the other hand, we will... I, I'm looking at the, your hard copy and a lot, of, a lot of the pages here cannot really be explained without the visuals. I mean, at least the maps, it will be hard to describe it yes, with that, words alone. Yes, ma'am. That's why we asked for, just to make sure that... Uh, the, okay, now, can we ask the operator if he's listening to move it forward two or three slides just back and forth to see kung okay na okay na ba oh, sige. okay director uh, magalong madam chair thank you madam chair the plan spelled out for the employment of 392 staff troopers assigned to 12 different operating groups for the mission their tasks are shown in the slide one group was assigned as the main effort or a support effort, two groups as blocking forces, and two groups for route security. An advanced command post and a tactical command post were established for command and control. The area of operations was located in Mamasapano, Maguindanao. It is basically a marshland crisscrossed by rivers with wide open cornfields and irrigation canals. This is a bird's eye view of the area shown to illustrate the unfavorable terrain that SAP operatives have to contend with. Non-government forces have significant presence in the area. The map shows the general location and estimated strength of various armed groups present in the area of operation. Notably, the 105th Base Command was formerly led by Umbra Kato, who is now head of the BIFF. This slide shows the location of government forces in the area. The PNP's presence is limited to five municipal police stations located in Datu Saudi, Raja Buayan, Sharif Saidona, Sharif Agwak, and Mama Sapano. The Maguindanao Police Provincial Office is also located in the area. The Army's units are dispersed in company and battalion-sized formations surrounding the area of operations. This is the area map reflected are waypoints used in the operational plan. The waypoints are set between the vehicular drop-off point or VDOP and the target. The 84th Special Action Company, or well known as Seaborne, was designated as the main effort of the operation. It was tasked to enter Marwan's encampment and arrest Marwan and Usman. The plan called for the deployment of the 55th, 45th, 42nd, and 41st Special Action Companies as containment forces along the entry and exit route of the Seaborn. The ACP is located at the BDOP along the Maharlika Highway designated as the main supply route or MSR. It was guarded by the 43rd Special Action Company or 43rd SAC which was equipped with two B-150 armored vehicles deployed hundreds of meters east and west of the ACP. 43rd SAC served as a containment force and route security for the MSR. The exit plan called for the support containment forces to withdraw, provide cover and security for the seaborne troops as they withdraw along the planned route. As can be seen from the comparison maps, there is a gap between the plan and the actual. Except for the seaborne unit, 
the other units did not reach their designated positions. The movement of the seaborne took about two hours longer than planned. They were delayed by the difficult terrain and the strong river current near the target. The departure of the support groups accordingly were delayed because the plan called for synchronization of their movement with that of the seaborne. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the seaborne was still able to reach its objective and neutralize Marwan. The bar graph is a schematic diagram reflecting the movement of the various operating subgroups toward their designated waypoints. The green bar shows the planned positions while the blue bar shows the actual positions of the operating groups. The numbers on the left side of the graph shows the waypoints. Seaborne made its exit from the target area under fire but still followed the planned route until waypoint 14. Seaborne troops were determined to reinforce 55th SAC, but because of the tremendous firepower and strength of the opposition, the TCP or the Tactical Command Post and 55th SAC advised them not to proceed with the link-up and instead move east. By this time, both Seaborne and 55th SAC were under heavy rifle and mortar fire. While moving, the seaborne teams engaged various armed groups from all directions. For hours until late in the afternoon at around 1800, they fought their way out, dragging their killed and wounded comrades. The seaborne went to lick up with elements of 42nd SAC and the Division Reconnaissance Company of the Philippine Army at 23.30 of January 25. Meanwhile, 55th SAC engaged non-government forces from around 0520 to around 1300. 35 of its 36 members were killed in action. The actual time when the firefight ended is only an estimate based on the last radio communication from the unit to the advance command post. Meanwhile, ACP and other units on the MSR or along the MSR have been under fire since 0830. In fact, three tanks of the mechanized brigade of the army sent to reinforce SAP were immobilized by persistent sniper fires from east of their location. The highlight of the entire operation started with a call to TCP at 0415 confirming the death of Marwan. At 0506, the SAF director sent a message to the commander of the 6th Infantry Division to inform him of the ongoing operation. SAF director then sent his deputy to the 1st Mechanized Brigade of the Armed Forces of the Philippines to ask for help and artillery support. At 0638, the Coordinating Committee on the Cessation of Hostilities, or CCCH, was informed of the ongoing encounter. SAF requested for artillery support in several locations between 0725 to 1735. Seaborne reached its objective at 0415 of the 38 members. Of the 38 members of Seaborne, only 13 were able to cross the river and engage Marwan in a far fight. Other BIFF forces or fighters were alerted of their presence when booby traps placed around Marwan's house exploded. Two troopers were wounded in the initial engagement. They endured several firefights along the way. Their pursuers stopped firing only after the delivery of three white phosphorus artillery rounds at around 1748. By the time they were rescued before midnight, nine members of the Seaborn were killed in action while 14 were wounded. Seven police commission officers and 37 police non-commissioned officers were killed for a total of 44 SAF troopers killed in action. In honor of the 44 heroes and the 15 wounded, the Board of Inquiry is committed to complete its task of finding out what happened. We will give justice to our SAF heroes by seeking the truth. Magandang araw po sa inyo. Maraming salamat po. 
Maraming salamat po, Director Magalong, sa inyong presentasyon at kinalap ninyong mga impormasyon na inabot ng ilang libong oras at ilang mga tao sa inyong hanay na gumawa ng trabaho na yan. Um, ang susunod naman po nating pakinggan ngayon ay ang, ang testimonya ni Direk, uh, ni um, ni Officer in Charge ng PNP na si Leonardo Espina. Magandang umaga po sa inyo lahat, Madam Chair, all the Senators, magandang uh, Your Honors. If you please may, I have no presentation uh, to make except one uh, statement after that. Uh, as a current head of your police force, I and all the uh, 150,000 strong members of the Philippine National Police fully support the peace process as we are first and foremost peacekeepers. However, we seek for clear answers from the other party of the peace process on the following questions. 44 of my men from the Special Action Force were killed in a brutal and merciless fashion. They were killed while performing legitimate police operations to arrest a terrorist bomber, a bomb trainer responsible for the death of scores of innocent Filipinos and who continue to be a serious threat to our peace-loving citizens. Your Honors, granting that my men failed to coordinate with the other party to enter their area for the lawful arrest of these terrorists who have a string of outstanding warrants of arrest for serious crimes to humanity, was it enough reason for, number one, the overkill of my men, there was clearly no intent to let anyone live in the 55th SAC, a special action company, as all 36 were mer mercilessly killed, except for one who was able to escape. Almost all were shot at close range, in their heads, with high-powered rifles to see to it that they were dead. They were stripped of their uniforms, clothes, firearms, and personal belongings, and cell, phone, and cell phones, even telling the wives of my men, Patay na ang asawa mo. Huwag ka nang tumawag. Secondly, Your Honors, clearly embellished in the uniforms of my men were special action forces patches, therefore clearly showing that they belong to government, which the other party knows they have continuing peace talks with. Thirdly, Your Honors, after killing all my men in the 55th, they maneuvered and joined other forces in the area to kill some more of my men belonging to the Seaborne Company. This after fully realizing that the troops in there were from government. We are all for peace, Your Honors, but we condemn in the strongest terms the treatment they did to my men. We respectfully request to let them answer these questions, to let them answer for these crimes, and return all the firearms and equipment belonging to us. We, your policemen, your honors, wholeheartedly thank you for this inquiry so that all of us, in our collective effort to investigate, can seek justice for our fallen heroes. Maraming maraming salamat po. We sympathize with you, Police uh, Director Leonardo Espina. Thank you so much for your statement. We will now, I would like to acknowledge um, PNP, uh, former PNP SAF uh, head, Getulio Napenas, to please issue a statement. Maraming salamat po, Madam uh, Chairperson, the Honorable Senator Grace Po. 
I salute our noble and gallant warriors. To our honorable senators, the officers and men and women of both the Philippine National Police and the Armed Forces of the Philippines, and to everyone inside this session hall, as well as those who are watching the respective homes, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. Ako po si Hitulio P. Napenas, Tubong Luna La Union, 55 years old, married and graduate of the Philippine Military Academy, class of 1982. I have been in the government service since 1978 when I entered the military for more than 36 years now. After graduation from the PMA, I was immediately assigned in the 54th Philippine Constabulary Battalion stationed in Parang Maguindanao. A year later, I went on to undergo the Special Action Force Ranger Course, followed by the Urban Counter-Revolutionary Warfare Course. While assigned with the Philippine Constabulary Regional Command 12, I handled various positions at the tactical level as Company Commander of the Regional Special Action Company, Company Commander in Iligan City, and Company Commander in Sultan Kudarat Province. I left Regional Command 12 in 1988 and was posted at the National Headquarters, then went on to join the UN mission in Cambodia until 1993. I came back in 1993 and went back again in the autonomous region in Muslim Mindanao in 1995 up to 1996. I returned to National Headquarters in 1997 and joined the National Headquarters Philippine National Police then left again for another UN mission in 2000 up to 2001, this time in East Timor. Upon my return, I joined again the National Headquarters, Philippine National for one year before I went on to another mission in Kosovo that was in 2002 to 2004. I returned from the UN mission and joined the Special Action Force for the second time in 2004 up to 2005 when I was posted as the Provincial Director of South Cotobato Police Provincial Office. From South Cotobato, in 2007, I returned to the National Headquarters, then again went back to the Special Action Force for the third time in 2008 up to 2012. 2013, I was posted in Police Regional Office 13 in Caraga, and in December of 2013, I returned back for the fourth time at the Special Action Force until the moment that I was relieved. I attended various courses, career courses of the Philippine National Police, and counter-terrorism operations training. If I, would, if I may mention of these courses, integrating counter-terrorism strategies at the national level, police leaders' role in combating terrorism, senior level crisis management, vital installation security, all were taken under the Anti-Terrorism Assistance Program of the United States State Department. I also took up the Allied Officers Intelligence course at the U.S. Army Intelligence Center School in Fort Huachuca, Arizona in 1989. I went on to undergo the strategic level leadership program at the United Kingdom Police College in, New in London. I am a recipient of two master's degree in one level seven executive diploma on strategic leadership under the Chartered Management Institute of the United Kingdom. And contrary to the very misleading reports, specifically the one mentioned by retired police chief superintendent Rodolfo Bogi Mendoza. I am not, and I was not, and I will never be a bata to anyone. It was mentioned in that report that I am a bata of Police Director General Purisima. 
I was never connected to any official from both the military and the police, nor any politician or person for that matter. In fact, I have never been under Police Director General Purisima in the previous assignment, except when he was Chief PNP, and I was then the Director of the Special Action Force. I can look to anyone, and I mean anyone, and tell him face to face, to face that I worked my way up the ladder, not because of my connections, but because of my performance, perseverance, dedication, credibility, and dignity, and integrity. As we all know, the main target of our operations in Mamasapano, Maguindanao, was the Malaysian terrorist Sulkipli bin here. It was already mentioned earlier in the briefing by Police Director Magalong, the profile of Marwan, but let me just add a few of those statements of Police Director Magalong. For the past four years, we had several intelligence reports that Marwan was hiding in Mindanao under the protection of Abu Sayyaf, Moro Islamic Liberation Front, and the Bangsamoro Islamic Freedom Fighters, though as early as 2003, there were already information that Marwan was already hiding somewhere in Mindanao. Marwan was likewise wanted by the Malaysian government for the killing of a Christian member of their parliament in 2000, which was an attack that was backed by the fallen terrorist Osama bin Laden's Al-Qaeda. Marwan also had a strong connection with the deceased Abu Sayyaf group leader Gaddafi Janjalani. In fact, Marwan's wife was the former widow of Janjalani. The reports are Marwan's militant activity in Mindanao. He may have been trained up to 300 terrorists in explosive shoes and detonating explosives. One of his cohorts in such activity is the other target of our operation, Abdul Basit Osman. Just recently, during the Pope's visit in the Philippines, we have information that the Jamaa Islamiya, in coordination with Marwan, had planned to construct a bomb to be detonated as the Papal convoy drove from TM Kalaw Street in Manila on January 18, 2015. These reports were not confirmed, neither admitted nor denied by the Philippine National Police, but the fact, however, remains that there exists this information. In just a couple of days ago, there were reports that not less than 30 of Marwan's students are roaming around central Mindanao, ready and willing and able to create widespread fear and terror, panic to our countrymen through the use of explosives, improvised explosives device. Our dear senators and fellow countrymen, these undeniable facts and information clearly show the danger that this Malaysian terrorist Sulkifli Marwan been here poses to the public. That danger no longer exists with his death on April on January 25, 2015. Thanks to our new breed of 44 heroes and the other members of the Special Action Force who executed Oplan Exodus. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our honorable senators especially the two chairperson of the two committees of the Senate, the Committee on Dangerous Drugs and Public Order, and the Committee on Peace, Unification, and Reconciliation, and its respective chairperson, the Honorable Senator Grace Poe and the Honorable Senator Chupestu Inguna III, for extending an invitation for me to attend the day and tomorrow's hearing in aid of legislation. I felt vindicated since the day I received the invitation from these two honorable committees at the Senate and told myself, finally, I will be given the fair opportunity in an appropriate forum to shed light as to what really transpired during our operation last January 25, 2015 in Mamasapano, Maguindanao. Ano po ang nais kong sabihin o parating? Simply lamang po. It is not unknown to everyone that the death of our brave soft troopers, the fallen 44, resulted to overflowing love, sympathy, affection, fondness, and passion in favor. And they really deserve it. They really do. However, there is this misconception from the public saying, Tila pinabayaan namin mga opisyal ang aming mga tauhan na pasukin ang lugar ng kalaban, na walang maayos na pagplano at kahandaang 
sinagawa bago ang nasabing pagsugod. Na wala ang koordinasyon na nangyari sa pagitan ng mga kapulisan at ng mga sundalo. Na kami ay naging pabaya at ang kapabayaang ito ang naging dahilan kung bakit apat na apat sa aming kasamahan sa SAF ay di nagawa pang makabalik sa kanilang mga pamilya. My dear senators and countrymen, these are far from truth. Nagkaroon po tayo ng mahaba, maayos at masusing pagpaplano, paghahanda at koordinasyon na ganap at isinagawa bago isik nakatuparan ang nasabing pagsugod sa mamasapano Maguindanao. Almost 10 years of my career were spent in the pursuit to serve just justice to Marwan's victims. It all started when I was still the Provincial Director of South Cotabato Police Office in 2005, wherein every minute the threats of bombing in the province exist. Not by the hour, it's every minute. The way back in the third quarter of 2003, there was already information that Marwan was hiding somewhere in Mindanao. However, I started working directly against Marwan as early as 2010. That time, I was the Deputy Director of Special Action Force. Later on, Abdul Basit Usman was also included in our targets. In December 2010, I supervised the operations against Marwan in Sulu as the principal officer, but just as our arresting troops arrived at his location, he escaped. Sometime in 2012, I also supervised the operations against Marwan in Butig, Lanao del Sur. Again, he managed to escape just a few minutes before SAP troops arrived. Police Chief Superintendent Noel Dolis Reyes, who was then the Deputy Director for the Directorate for Intelligence, know how Marwan managed to escape in that operation. Also in April 25, 2014, I supervised the operations against Marwan in Usman, in Barangay Libutan, Mamasapano, Maguindanao. This was the one we called as Oakland Wolverine, as we heard it in the news. Unfortunately, the same was aborted after the 6th Infantry Division Philippine Army withdraw its commitment to provide mechanized brigade units to support the operations. The planning of these operations was done in coordination with the Joint Special Operations Group and the 6th Infantry Division, Philippine Army at that time. I supervised these operations as the SAF senior officer since Marwan and Usman are considered high-value targets and operation against them is highly sensitive. The concept of this operation, Operation Plan Wolverine, was approved by then Police Director General Purisima, then the Chief PNP, and presented during the executive session at the National Headquarters, Philippine National Police, in the presence of His Excellency, the Secretary of the Interior Local Government, the Chief PNP, Police Chief Superintendent Noel de los Reyes, who was then the Regional Director of Police Regional Office Arm, who then provided the intelligence packet at that time. After which, I personally presented the same briefing to Police Deputy Director General Leonardo Espina, the then the Deputy Chief PNP for Operations and his office. I duly informed the Chief PNP through phone stating therein the reason why the operation was aborted. The Chief PNP told me that he will inform higher authorities, uh, higher authorities what happened. Another operation in coordination with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, the 6th ID, was launched in May 30, 2014. It was also aborted because of heavy armed groups activity in the target area, particularly at the vehicle drop-off point. Barely 10 days later, on June 10, 2014, the 6th ID, the Mechanized Brigade of the Philippine Army, all of a sudden conducted raid operation against Marwan in Usman at the same location without coordination from the Special Action Force, but they failed to neutralize Marwan in Usman. However, they recovered some of their equipment or material uh, evidence, evidence in bomb making. These are just few of the reasons why the succeeding operations, the coordination with the AP, will be time on target of the arresting force to avoid the possibility that our operation will be compromised. Of course, many of you will ask what could be the reason why the operations will be compromised. The main reason is that the information and preparations of operations are leaked whenever major operations against high-value targets are conducted 
as the subjects, both Marwan and Usman, are being cuddled by the MILF, whose members have lots of contacts with the AP and PNP. Thus, the high level of operation security and secrecy are utmost of importance. The director of PNP Intelligence Group is very much concerned also of the compromise whenever coordination is done with the Armed Forces of the Philippines, including our own intelligence unit. And this is based on our past experiences. Then around on August 2014, then Regional Director of ARMM, Police Chief Superintendent De Los Reyes, gave to me the new grid coordinates of the possible location of Marwan in Barangay, Pitsandawan, Mamasapano, Maguindanao. I also requested him to provide us the route of the location since we did not know of any route going to the given grid coordinates. Also, we started intelligence preparation in the battlefield where we found out that the location is high risk because of the presence of thousands of MILF in Bay IFF in the difficult terrain. In the early part of November, one Sunday at around 10 o'clock in the evening, Police Director General Purisima, then the Chief PNP, called up and instructed me to proceed to the White House in Camp Crame, Quezon City. Upon arrival there, he instructed me to work with Police Senior Superintendent Fernando Mendez, Director Intelligence Group, as the new location of Marwan in Basitukman was identified and told me that he has an agent in the area of the location. I followed his instruction and I was able to talk to the Director Intelligence Group, Police Senior Superintendent Mendez, and he told me that the actionable document was already in the hands of Police Superintendent Raymond Train, who works as the Special Action Force Intelligence Officer in the 84th SAP Seaborn Unit under the Rapid Deployment Battalion. This intelligence packet was subjected to long studies and served as basis in the mission planning of the group, composed of myself, Police Chief Superintendent Noli Talino, the Deputy Director, Police Senior Superintendent Amando Clifton in Piso, the Chief Directorial Staff of the Special Action Force, Police Senior Superintendent Richard De La Rosa, the Chief of Intelligence of the Special Action Force, Police Superintendent Gregory Bugnyalbal, the Chief of Operations of the Special Action Force, Police Superintendent Michael John Mangahis, the Commanding Officer of the 3rd Battalion, who is already posted in Manila, but we need his expertise because he was a long-time commander of the 4th Special Assumption Battalion based in Maguindanao. Police Superintendent Abraham Abayari, the Commanding Officer of the Rapid Deployment Battalion, were in the Seaborne Unit, works under him. Police Superintendent Train was also included in the planning group, including Police Senior Inspector Ricardo Marasigan, also an intelligence officer of the Special Action Force. Later on, the commanding officers of the 84th SAC, the Seaborn Unit, and the 5th Special Action Battalion Commander were also included in the mission planning, after which an operation plan was prepared, which I, together with Police Chief Superintendent Talino, the Deputy Director Staff, Police Senior Superintendent De La Rosa, Police Superintendent Mangahis, and Police Superintendent Train, presented to Police Director General Purisima at the White House. In response, Police Director General Purisima said, Go, but I have to tell the President regarding this matter. This operation, which we called Oplan Terminator, was launched on November 29, 2014, but was aborted due to equipment failure while the arresting force was en route to the target. The reason of the abort of the mission was verbally reported to Police Director General Purisima at his quarters. Thereafter, we, myself, Police Chief Superintendent Talino, Police Senior Superintendent Pendez of the Intelligence Group, Police Senior Superintendent De La Rosa, Police Superintendent Train, joined Police Director General Purisima to the Presidential Security Group Piring Reigns compound in Malacanian Park on November 30, 2014, where Police Director General Purisima rendered mission update to His Excellency. Another operation, the Oplan Terminator 2, was launched using tactical boats. But the assault force was engaged by lawless group along the river, approximately 3 kilometers going to the target in Barangay Tukalanipaw, Mamasapano, Maguindanao. The mission was again called off. Due to the two failed mission, 
the use of precision guided munition bomb was considered. A coordination meeting was done at General Headquarters Armed Forces of the Philippines, Camp Aguinaldo, Quezon City, in the third week of December 2014, during the Armed Forces of the Philippines anniversary. And the meeting was attended by General Gregorio Catapang, the Chief of Staff, Armed Forces of the Philippines, Lieutenant General Rostico Guerrero, Commanding General of the Western Mindanao Command, Major General Edmundo Pangilinan, Commanding General of the 6th Infantry Division, Police Director General Purima, and myself. It was in this meeting that Lieutenant General Guerrero mentioned that they have the precision guided munition and even mentioned that they recently used it in Basilan. Thus, a coordination meeting was set up at the 3rd Air Force Division in Sambuanga on December 23, 2014 for a specific coordination of the operation. The attendees of the meeting in Sambuanga were Lieutenant General Guerrero, Major General Emeraldo Magnaye, the Commanding General of the 3rd Air Force Division, Major General Pangilinan, myself, Police Superintendent Train. In the initial discussion of the meeting, it was revealed by Major General Magnaye that the Air Force does not have its own precision guided munition or bomb. This information was relayed to Police Senior Superintendent Mendez, who was still on his, way, on his way to the meeting because his flight was delayed at that time, and he has in his possession the intelligence packet. This made Police Senior Superintendent Mendez not to proceed to the meeting to avoid providing the intelligence packet as the agreed precision guided munition was agreed upon to be used in the operation was not available. Thus, this concept of operation was ruled out. Starting December 23, 2014, the mission planning group of the Special Action Force once again get back to work and mission planning begins. On January 9, 2015, we, Police Director General Purisima, myself, and Police Superintendent Mendez went to Malacanang and met His Excellency at the Bahay Pangarap for mission update and the new concept of operation. We named this operation as Oplan Exodus. Under Oplan Exodus, coordination with the Armed Forces of the Philippines will be time on target in order to avoid another compromise. His Excellency cited about the coordination with the AP that he had earlier stated in the press statement. After the update, Police Senior Superintendent Mendez and myself went out while Police Director General Purisima stayed behind. It was then when Police Director General Purisima when he came out, he stated, Huwag mo munang sabihan yung dalawa, saka na pag nandun na. Ako na ang bahala kay General Katapang. Before the end of December 2014, new communication systems were set up at the headquarters 43rd Special Action Company in Maguindanao Police Provincial Office in Sharif Agwak. We set up three communication systems there to support us in our operations. That same place will serve us as the tactical command post for the operation. Civilian trucks were rented to be used to avoid compromise in the entry of troops. And on January 18, 2015, the Chief Intelligence Police Senior Superintendent De La Rosa, the commanders of the 3rd Special Action Battalion in the Rapid Deployment Battalion, went to Sambuanga City and linked up with the 84th Special Action Company Seaborn and the 55th Special Action Company under the 5th Battalion for further mission planning and finalize the preparations of the operations. Rehearsals and exercises on movement at night to avoid detection, including live firing, were undertaken. Equipment were continuously checked and prepared for the operations. The participating troops from Sambuanga City, Dabao del Sur, North Cotabato, Agusan Sur, Cotabato City, and General Santos City moved to their respective staging areas on January 21 to 23, 2015. Subsequently, the three police commission officers moved to General Santos City from Sambuanga for the final mission planning and coordination, together with all the unit commanders and key personnel involved in the operation. From the above, I believe it is clear that contrary to the unverified reports in the news, the PNP staff did its best in the preparations and in the planning of our operations against Marwan in Usman. Unfortunately, and with heavy heart, I am very sorry to say that not all of our men who took part in the Oplan Exodus did make it alive back. 
notwithstanding the above preparations and planning we made, just like in other, any in other encounter, especially in this case, where the subjects of the operations are high-value terrorists, Syria casualty should be the ideal, but it is highly in, uncertain. The SAP troopers who made their way to Barangay Tukalanipa o Mamasapano Maguindanao I, I, are highly trained individuals. They know what they are doing and know what to do in times of adversity and hostility. Had it been otherwise, the confined force of the MILF and BIFF and other private armed groups would have not suffered at least 250 casualties in the midst of the firefight that took place almost the entire day. The soft troopers, the noble and gallant warriors, believe that evil triumphs when good men do nothing. It is in the special action force, it is not just a unit, it is a family, that good men gather together to fight against evil. These warriors fully understand the risk in our profession and we're ready to lose our lives, but never our honor and dignity. And yes, Madam, and sirs, you heard it right. Hindi po bababa sa dalawang daan at limang pong katao ang naging casualty sa mga naengkwentrong pinagsanib na pwersa ng MILF, BIFF at iba pang private armed groups ng ating mga gigiting at matatapang na bayani mula sa PNP Special Action Force. To give you an example, Police Superintendent Train alone, the overall commander of the assault force who took out Marwan, was able to shoot down somewhere bit between 25 to 30 of the attackers. According to him, it is also safe to say that the entire assault force, the 84th company, was able to shoot down at least 150 of the enemies. I also talked personally to PO2 Christopher Lalan, the lone survivor of the 55th company, and he told me that at least 100 members of the combined forces of the MILF and BIFF and private armed groups were taken down by sub troopers from his company. The 84th and 50th sub company, which took part in Oplan Exodus, also has, also have two and six snipers respectively under their unit. For sure, these highly trained snipers could have shot down on the average of at least 20 each from the attackers. Not to mention are those taken down by our men from the 45th, 42nd and 41st Company, who likewise engaged in the firefight. The 43rd Company also has its own armored personal carrier, the B-150, which was firing almost the entire day. Likewise, present are the six uh, armored personal carriers from the Army Mechanized Brigade that likewise continuously fire against the attackers. This will surely increase the number of casualties suffered by our enemies, contrary to the 18 casualties as reported by the MILF. In other words, had the artillery support we requested arrive on time, the situation would have been entirely different. Though I admit, it may not have zero, guaranteed zero casualty on our part, but at the very least, had the artillery support arrived hours earlier, the number of casualties would have been lesser than the actual figure we suffered. Sa madaling salita po at sa lungat at kung ano ang mga nakasaad o nakasulat sa mga balita at bahayagan, ang mga SAP troopers sa barangay to Kalanipaw ay nagtugo, nagtungo sa lugar na yon ng may humigit pa sa sapat na paghahanda. Tamang pagpaplano at higit sa lahat, hindi masusukat na tapang pagmamahal at magmamalasakit para sa ating mahal na inang bayan at mga kababayan na maging biktima pa ni Namaruan at ni Usman. Mga katangiang, tanging sa isang troop, sub-trooper lamang makikita. Muli po, ako si Police Director Hitulio Pascua Napeñas, the former Chief of the Philippine National Police Special Action Force, and I stand firm with the words I uttered since the minute the news of this unfortunate event broke out. Mission accomplished. This is only the word that the sub-troopers need to hear. Only that it happened with a high price. The lives of our 44 brave young men, our heroes, our true Tagaligtas, the Special Action Force Troopers of the Philippine National Police. Maraming salamat po at maganda umaga. Salamat po, Chief Superintendent 
uh, na Penya sa inyong presentasyon. At masusing uh, pagkalap ng mga impormasyon at mas mabuti rin mas nakikilala ka ng publiko ang iyong pinagdaanan, ang iyong pinag-aralan, ang iyong mga karanasan. Company or 43rd SAC which was equipped with two B-150 armored vehicles deployed hundreds of meters east and west of the ACP. 43rd SAC served as a containment force and route security for the MSR. The exit plan called for the support containment forces to withdraw, provide cover and security for the seaborne troops as they withdraw along the planned route. As can be seen from the comparison maps, there is a gap between the plan and the actual. Except for the seaborne unit, the other units did not reach their designated positions. The movement of the seaborne took about two hours longer than planned. They were delayed by the difficult terrain and the strong river current near the target. The departure of the support groups accordingly were delayed because the plan called for synchronization of their movement with that of the seaborne. Notwithstanding the foregoing, the seaborne was still able to reach its objective and neutralize Marwan. The bar graph is a schematic diagram reflecting the movement of the various operating SAF groups toward their designated waypoints. The green bar shows the planned positions while the blue bar shows the actual positions of the operating groups. The numbers on the left side of the graph shows the waypoints. Seaborn made its exit from the target area under fire but still followed the planned route until waypoint 14. Seaborn troops were determined to reinforce 55th SAC but because of the tremendous firepower and strength of the opposition, the TCP or the Tactical Command Post and 55th SAC advised them not to proceed with the link-up and instead move east. By this time, both Seaborn and 55th SAC were under heavy rifle and mortar fire. While moving, the Seaborn teams engaged various armed groups from all directions. For hours until late in the afternoon at around 1800, they fought their way out, dragging their killed and wounded comrades. The Seaborn went to lick up with elements of 42nd SAC and the Division Reconnaissance Company of the Philippine Army at 23.30 of January 25. Meanwhile, 55th SAC engaged non-government forces from around 0520 to around 1300. 35 of its 36 members were killed in action. The actual time when the firefight ended is only an estimate is limited to five municipal police stations located in Datu Saudi, Raja Buayan, Sharif Saidona, Sharif Aguak, and Mama Sapano. The Maguindanao Police Provincial Office is also located in the area. The Army's units are dispersed in company and battalion-sized formations surrounding the area of operations. This is the area map reflected our waypoints used in the operational plan. The waypoints are set between the vehicular drop-off point or VDOP and the target. The 84th Special Action Company or well known as Seaborn was designated as the main effort of the operation. It was tasked to enter Marwan's encampment and arrest Marwan and Usman. The plan called for the deployment of the 55th, 45th, 42nd, and 41st Special Action Companies as containment forces along the entry and exit route of the Seaborn. The ACP is located at the BDOP along the Maharlika Highway designated as the main supply route or MSR. It was guarded by the 43rd Special Action Company. The plan spelled out for the employment of 392 SAF troopers assigned to 12 different operating groups for the mission. Their tasks are shown in the slide. One group was assigned as the main effort or as support effort. 
two groups as blocking forces and two groups for route security. An advanced command post and a tactical command post were established for command and control. The area of operations was located in Mamasapano, Maguindanao. It is basically a marshland crisscrossed by rivers with wide open cornfields and irrigation canals. This is a bird's eye view of the area shown to illustrate the unfavorable terrain that SAP operatives have to contend with. Non-government forces have significant presence in the area. The map shows the general location and estimated strength of various armed groups present in the area of operation. Notably, the 105th Base Command was formerly led by Umbra Kato, who is now head of the BIFF. This slide shows the location of government forces in the area. The PNP's present uh, Madam Chair, I am uh, informed that the computers are showing uh, a, an image in the computer screen, but there must be the wiring. I'm not saying that it's the Senate's equipment, but the computer is showing an uh, image, but I think that the... the, the uh, we'll try again. But anyway, Ma Madam Chair, we are in slide uh, 13 in the handout. This is slide 13. Thank you. Maybe That's it's a here. question of compatibility because we normally don't have this problem in the Senate. On the other hand, we will... I, I'm looking at the, your hard copy and a lot, of, a lot of the pages here cannot really be explained without the visuals. I mean, at least the maps, it will be hard to describe it yes, with that, words alone. Yes, ma'am. That's why we asked for, just to make sure that, uh, the, okay, now, can we ask the operator if he's listening to move it forward two or three slides just back and forth to see kung okay na? Okay na ba? Oh, sige. Okay. Director uh, Magalong, Madam Chair. Thank you, Madam Chair. <clears throat> 